Hello everyone, FPS Chasley here, welcome back to my tutorial series. And today we are continuing our coverage of the Oliver Hazard Parry. So uh, today we'll be covering both the weapons coordinator and weapons control stations because I believe they are both uh, very similar. You're not really using one without the other here. So uh, I think it just makes sense to go over these things hand in hand. So uh, before you start engaging any ships, you need to go to the weapons coordinator here. And uh, there's two ways you can detect um, enemy contacts here. We have our shipboard radars, we have air detection radar, and uh, surface detection radar. And uh, our helo also has a radar, so we can also use the helo as like a mobile radar post if we so desire. So at first here, let's just try using our own sensors here. I had to put them on staggered like that just to make sure they're uh, actually transmitting. You can also turn them on from here if you want to service radar, air radar, and uh, for the time being I'm actually going to go ahead and change our helo to radar link. So this is how you'll be able to get radar data from the helo. I suppose I can just show that right now, can't I? So we uh, go to the helo and you press REMRO, remote radar operator, and now we got radar emitting from our our helo as well. So now we got several sources of radar emission here, which is very cool. So uh, we haven't detected anything on the radar yet. There we go. First radar contact. Yes, we have an enemy boat out here. We're going to be doing some firing in this tutorial here. Just some basic firing. Because there really isn't much to it. It doesn't really warrant an advanced tutorial, I don't think. And uh, we also got multiple contacts out here. One from the Remro. I think this is from the Remro. I'm not sure which one is the Remro and which one isn't. But it looks like they've been merged together now by our, our TMA. But yeah, we have uh, two enemy helos out here. And we got enemy ships as well getting them on ESM and on other sensors. If some of this isn't making any sense to you and you, that you're, this is my first tutorial that you're watching, you should go and check out my intro to Dangerous Waters slash, slash submarine tutorials videos. Um, since I already went over those in those tutorials, I'm not really going over the basics in these new tutorials with the parry onwards. I'm just going over the specifics to each ship, really. So, uh, yeah, now that we got those two types of sensors, I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the Remro here. We don't really need those extra, all this extra contact here. And as you can see, we're also getting link data from the helo as well. So uh, yeah, now that we have contacts, what we're gonna do is, uh, well here, first let me um, go back to my, let me turn link data off for the time being. Let me get rid of this ESM contact. Now I don't think that's an ESM contact, is it? It might be. I'm gonna go ahead and, okay, ESM's not even crude right now, so I don't know. Hang on a second. Alright, so the AN-APS-147 is the Hilo radar, and then the AN-SPS-55 is the Oliver Hazard Perry surface search radar. So, uh, yeah, it looks like we have the Hilo over here on both the surface search and the air search radar. And this boat over here, we only have it on the surface search radar. Is that still on? It is. For some reason, we only have a, uh, a bearing here. We don't really have range, which is, well, we do have the range, actually, but it's not in a solution. That's not too big a deal. So, uh, yeah, what you're going to do is we're going to come here into the weapons coordinator. And uh, in order to engage a contact, you have to go ahead and click engage. Um, there's a way to make this automatic. I have it on manual right now. I'm forgetting how you make it automatic. I think it's an option. Let's check that out. So uh, yeah, we'll just I'm just gonna go over the complete manual way here. That's fine. So we got this guy on engage here, and uh, what da, 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 I think I turned the link off. No, I turned the did I turn the remro off? I think I did turn the remro off. So that's why those look silly. All right, so we got them on our own radars here, so we can go ahead and engage these fellers as well. Now I have two of them for one reason because one's at approximately 30 nautical miles away. This one seems to be a little closer here. Wait, hold on. Range circle. Okay, that one's at 25 nautical miles. These guys did not follow their orders from the manual here. They're supposed to hang out at certain ranges here. I don't know why they're not. I was supposed to have this one loitering at about 30 nautical miles, and this one's supposed to be loitering at 25 nautical miles. Because I feel like, in my experience, I have actually engaged something that's 30 nautical miles away, but I think it's generally accepted that the maximum range of our service to air missiles is 25 nautical miles. All right, so we have these guys in the engage queue. Do we? Do we have them in the engage queue? Doesn't look like it. That's weird. Okay, well now they are. 
now they're in the engage queue they need to be in the target queue here before you can launch on them here so let's launch on these helos first so we have them in the target queue here uh, this is the weapons control screen i guess i should go over it i never really went over this but there's a uh, not too much to really go over here what's the classify button do okay you can designate it as what you think it is very well okay yeah this is a pretty self-explanatory screen here hold fire and then you can actually hold fire means you, you don't want anything to shoot on it anymore and then break all means just you know i think that drops all the targets out of the queue or whatever and then uh so yeah now we're going to go over to weapons control and we got the weapons control screen here so uh, you can see there are three targets are in here and uh we got a lot of things here so this is the target queue this tells us which targets are in the queue here um, you got your info on each track, the source, all the solution stuff. Here's our stores, SM2, this is the service to air missile. Um, the missile itself has a range of 80 nautical miles, but our tracking radar can't go further than 25 or 30 nautical miles. So just bear that in mind, you can't really engage a target past 25 or 30 nautical miles. For sure, if you're working by yourself, I don't know if they have a model in this game where you could put in an E2 Hawkeye and it could guide your missiles in past a certain point. Not sure if that's modeled. But for the intents of this tutorial, your maximum range for service-to-air missiles is 25 nautical miles. You don't have that same problem with harpoons because they have their own radar seeker heads. So they're fire and forget, basically. But the SM2s have to be guided in by our surface radar. Harpoons and anti-ship missile, I think I've been over this before. We only can carry four of those, where we can carry 36 SM2s. Uh, moving on down, we got the rail status. That's uh, this thing up here. This is the rail right here. This carries the missiles. This loads the missiles up, and that's where they're all fired from. So right now the rail is empty, and uh, you can click one of these buttons to load load the specific weapon. Uh, to load a harpoon, first you have to make a harpoon harpoon <laughs> harpoon plan similar to a tomahawk land attack missile from a submarine. Uh, we got two different things here: cast status and stir status. So I believe the stir is the default radar. There's two tracking radars: stir radar does only missiles, but cast radar can also do the big 76 millimeter cannon here. So that's the reason why you can't use it at first, because that's reserved for the 76mm the cannon. However, if you do launch one missile and the stir is occupied, it can only guide one missile at a time, you can assign another target to the cast. So at, mo at, two at most, you can have two surface-to-air missiles engaging at one time. Uh, you can't launch any more missiles than that. And of if wh while those are being tracked, you can launch as many harpoons as you like, because they don't need a radar. They don't need the ship's radar to be able to, to guide them in. Yeah, you got that. And then the gun of control this is the big 76 millimeter. We'll get to that in a second here. I'm just gonna. I guess I can pause the game here so I can take my time and not rush. So as you can see, all we have here is the cast radar. Uh, these lines here indicate the baffles for the the gun. We can only shoot where there aren't lines like that. So basically, just the sides of the ship. You can't shoot in front or behind. And uh, let's see. So you can you can whip out the. Uh, I might have to resume it. You can whip out a camera here, and it'll actually show a camera that the gun is seeing if the target's close enough. And then uh, if your solution's not good enough, you can do some manual correction here. You can adjust bearing or range. It's not changing because I have the game paused right now. And then we also have, oh, yeah, up here it lists the amount, the amount of ammo. So you got 80 rounds per magazine, and you got four magazines. So plenty of ammo. I've never had a problem where I've gone through all this ammo. You don't really use this too much, but it can be fun to use. Uh, if you've watched my videos, this is what I'm referring to when I say we have to do it the old-fashioned way. Moving on down here to the harpoon plan, so you got some presets for harpoons. Here's the first preset, basically. Uh, you can like go through and see what the different presets here are. I think it's all the same thing, but you can like tailor it to a certain Great, mission. So you could like, uh, two, if you got like a cluster six. of ships out there and you want them to all go in the same preset, you could just do that instead of having to enter it in each time. So uh, yeah, this is all similar stuff from uh, how to launch a missile from a, a submarine here. Um, you're gonna have to. Uh, add a target to it though so you can apply a target here and then you know you could do auto preset if you wanted that's fine and then you can go over here to missile control and you can actually launch it we'll get to that in a second and then the final mac daddy here is the the c wiz ciws close in weapon system that's this bad boy right here uh this thing is a it's a minigun that shoots tungsten bullets at a rate of about two or three thousand rounds per minute to try and take out incoming missiles or even air threats. Uh, usually you're just going to want to set that to auto, but you can actually set it to, to manual mode here. And uh, I'll go over how to do that um, eventually, but first let's try and take out this helo here. So let's go ahead and assign the helo to the missile. Let's load up an SM2. Warm that bad boy up on the rails. 
this guy's heading right for us. There's no idea what's coming for him. So, okay, so we got him on the radar. Uh, the weapon's on the rail. We can now fire. And uh, make sure you click confirm or else it won't fire here. We should get a launch. There you go. And this guy's going down. Here we go. Say goodnight. Pow, right in the kisser. There you go. Simple as that. Not much to it. You can go ahead and drop that track as he is toast. Uh, I think this is actually where, like, the frickin'... Yeah, this is near Baltimore right here. I'm from Maryland. I think this is where, like, Fort McHenry is, so... <laughs> it's like we're fighting off the British right now, man. Alright, another thing I should mention is after you fire a missile, the assign button here goes to CWI, which means Constant Wave Illumination. So, the way the fire control radar works is it's a dedicated radar meant to just... You know, just shooting radar off the target and nothing else. That's all it does, hence constant wave illumination. If for some reason you launched an SM2 in error, if you want to stop it, just click the click the constant wave illumination button here and it'll turn off the radar. And the SM2 is programmed so that once it stops receiving radar signals, it just automatically self-destructs. So if you want to uh, turn the SM2 off or shut it down or whatever, just click the CWI button here and that'll turn the SM2 off. Alright, so if we turn to the south, we can unmask our batteries here. We can engage this guy with the uh, the gun control. I think that's going to be the easiest way to do that, so we can assign him. And if you turn to the camera here, you can see it's like a... Oh, you can also, with this thing, you can go to the helo, and you can look and see what the helo is looking at. There's this one multiplayer mission where that comes into play. Yeah, as you can see, the helo is now trained onto that, that ship, and the helo is like rotating around, so you can like see... Uh, the helo itself there <laughs> and uh, as we're rotating around the 76 millimeter turret we'll be able to to see the uh, this boat here as soon as we finish this turn we're only going five knots so this takes a little while to do go a little faster there I think the boat is too far away to actually particularly see it I might be able to slight I feel like I'd be able to see it pretty decently um, it might be pretty far all right so with this big gun here uh to do is he not in the queue it looks like he's not in the queue right now engage don't know why he's not in the queue de assign assign i think we're actually out of range are we out of range no i think we're in range here so what's the problem oh this is the problem you have to actually unclick hold fire here so uh here we go let's bring the camera up and let's fire off some shots. So you can do single fire mode. It only fires one shell for each time you click it. Or you can do rapid fire mode and it'll shoot about, you know, one shell every half a second or so. Hold fire. Track one, so you can zero, click hold fire to zero, stop shooting eight. or you can like click rapid fire again. So uh, these shells will be landing here shortly. I'm just going to try and keep this up just to look at it. You'll, you'll be able to see the shells splash down. We might kill it here. Uh, but we can still launch a harpoon on it, that's fine. It doesn't have to actually be there to launch a harpoon. Yeah, it's probably going to take a little bit for these shells to come in. It is eight, eight and a half nautical miles away. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, for some reason the splashes aren't showing up in the window there, but... See, as you can see, we're like a little bit off here, so if you wanted to, you could try and correct the solution a little bit. Oh, we're just going to launch a good old harpoon at this guy right here. Uh, so let's apply it to this guy here. Missile control, load up a harpoon on the rail takes a little longer to do than the uh, the SM2. So you cannot unload a harpoon from the rail. That's a big point. You cannot unload a harpoon, so you have to jettison it instead, so you just lose a harpoon. So you want to make sure you've got a good solution here, and you're really ready to fire on someone before you put a harpoon on the rail, because you can't you can't unload it. It's it's it, When it's up there, it's getting ready to fire. So uh, that's also something to keep in mind there. So we're ready to launch, so let's fire. Fire and confirm. And there goes the old harpoon. Yeah, this guy will be able to hit home and take this guy out. We can actually watch it in the gun control. <laughs> so let's bring up the camera here, and let's speed up time and watch the fireworks. We'll probably be able to see that camera come into view, any, or see that missile come into... Oh yeah, see, he's starting to launch at the missile now. We should be able to... Oh. Uh, the gun's not really loaded onto him. Oh well. Yeah, our missile's about to get him there. How? Yep, he's done. Good old harpoon takes out missile boats like it's nothing. All right, we're about to like run aground here. But I think that's about the extent of what I wanted to cover here. You also have the Sea Whiz. Uh, you can turn this off of hold fire. Uh, the way this works here is you can put up a. I don't think you can actually put up 
you, you pick someone from the target queue up here, you click acquire, and then you get the hooked bearing and then the acquired bearing. And then once these get within about two degrees of each other, that's when you can tell it to engage. If you do it by manual mode, automatic mode, you can have it on hold fire, auto or full auto. Um, auto just means it shoots at anything that's, uh, I think it's above a certain speed or heading to the ship and it, it, uh, it respects transponders, so like our helo will be putting off a friendly transponder so the auto wouldn't engage in because of that. But full auto, it just shoots anything that moves. It's just going crazy, so auto is, uh, that's pretty much good enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching, everyone. That's been my tutorial on both weapons coordinator and weapons control. This might be a long one, but I think it's, um, it's good to put these two guys together since they're clo so closely linked together. Don't really use one without the other. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching everyone. And in our next tutorial, I believe we'll just dedicate a video to torpedo control. And then we'll, uh, after that we'll get into the Toad and the TMA. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then. I'm FAS Chasley. Thanks for watching.